Hey there, it's Benjamin from Drupal, and welcome to this episode of Refactored, our series where we feature interesting stories of careers in tech. My guest today is Simon Barker, who, as a self taught developer, has a lot of great stories that he'll share with me in our chat. And Simon's brand new book, Career Switch to Coding, is now available in an Amazon store near you in inverted commas. So go and check that out if you think this chat is interesting, if you're considering a career switch to coding yourself, or you're currently in that journey, I hope you enjoy this chat with Simon. So without any further preamble, here's Simon Barker. Good afternoon, Simon Barker joining us from Warwick in the UK. I uh, appreciate taking the time. How how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm, I'm really good. We're getting a bit of late September sun here, which is super nice for the UK. Uh, pretty pretty rare. So, you know, feeling, feeling pretty good. We love that. Now, we've got a, a big agenda of stuff to chat about today, and I, I've got a few questions I'm really excited to ask you. So I'd love to just dive straight into this one. Tell me, Simon, where did you get your start and how did you break your way into a career in tech? Yeah, so I learned to code like 13 years ago, uh, just as a hobby, really. Uh, I was on my PhD as well in electrical engineering. Um, and then I kind of just sort of bimbled around using code, um, ran my own little manufacturing business for a bit. And then when that finished up, uh, I found myself uh, needing, needing a job. I was relocating to uh, a very distant part of the country from where I was based. Uh, and so I felt, well, you know, I'm, I'm coding most days anyway, trying to find a way to, to crowbar coding into my day job. Why don't I actually go and do it as a day job? So I uh, applied for a junior dev role um, at a local company and they, uh, they, they, they brought me on. Uh, and the reason that I landed up applying locally for as a junior dev is I'd applied for a good couple of hundred other roles in various different fields and areas. Um, and coding wow. was, was I, I thought, well, I'm not good enough to code uh, professionally. You know, I've just been doing my own thing for a few years. Um, and actually, turned out it was it was like the skills I'd got were, were a really good starting point to actually go and get a, a junior dev role. So I started with a UK high street retailer um, working in their warehousing IT department. Uh, they, you know, they manage literally mm -hmm. millions of, of items uh, a month, probably. Um, and, and yeah, it was it was great. It fitted well with my background, uh, and it was all web dev stuff. And yeah, it was it was a really good kind of first first job. It's really nice. That's really interesting. And you mentioned there a feeling of what many would describe an in imposter syndrome uh, coming from what was essentially a self-taught journey into tech. Um, tell me a little bit more about how that felt and how you overcame that feeling of you know being the imposter. Yeah, it was interesting. So back then, I wouldn't have described it as imposter syndrome. I would just have described it as mm. I'm not a professional developer because I didn't know any software developers. I'd just been writing code for myself for the better part of a decade. And the only software developers I interacted with were on Stack Overflow which is famously not a particularly mm -hmm. friendly place uh, in the comments and what have you. And right. so I was like, oh, these guys are all like super smart and they all, they've got all their stuff together and like they know everything. And I'm just here like Googling all the time. Well, little did I know, <laughs> I actually got into a job as a software developer. It's Google all the time anyway. That's literally what software engineering seems to be. Uh, and, right. uh, and when you actually start talking to software developers, they're like, oh yeah, we just Google stuff all the time like as long as you know some basic syntax and how to you know get something actually up and running after that you learn on the yeah. job and, and you google as you go so I, I at the time i wouldn't have called it imposter syndrome i would have just called it not realizing the skills that i had because i just assumed that all software developers were right. these super awesome amazing um brainiacs uh, when in reality, it's mm -hmm. a really diverse industry with lots of people from different backgrounds and you come at it with your own unique set of skills. Um, and there is no kind of best or worst way into the industry. There's just your way. And my way was self-taught and then a e-commerce retailer. Yeah, that's really powerful, I think. Um, and a nice reminder, perhaps, to some of our audience listening uh, that you know the reminder of the, the skills that you've got are the skills that you've got, and they're uh, they're certainly worth something. Uh, I really I really appreciate that. So you got started with a high street retailer. 
tell me a bit about the journey from that first role um, over to what you're now working on, which of course we'll dive into in, in much de- in much more depth. Uh, of course, I'm talking about career switch coding. Mm. Uh, tell us about some of the milestones or maybe pivotal moments from the very beginning of your career to where you're at today. Yeah, so I started off at the High Street Retailer. It was a wonderful company, really, really lovely company. Uh, and with a large existing IT infrastructure, really interesting legacy code challenges, a lot of uh, refactoring work to do. I took only ship on a couple of projects to kind of do some big upgrades and and install kind of some newer um, uh, approaches and systems working with other developers. Uh, I think the big milestone was as soon as I came off my probation, I was promoted to software engineer level two, uh, which was kind of skipping three grades because it turns out 10 years of doing your own thing (laughs) is is actually you, you are yeah, you're, you're more than a, a junior developer. And depending on who's listening to this and how long you have been coding for, yeah, if you have been coding for a few years, there is a strong chance that you are actually a, a mid-level already. There's just a few kind of rough edges and mm. team aspects like uh, Git, for example, in sort of a, a distributed mm-hmm. Git aspect that you might already actually be a software engineer. Uh, unfortunately, COVID uh, put a lot of stresses and strains in that business. Uh, so I then moved over to a data science consultancy where I worked with one other developer, bringing a new project completely from scratch, from the ground up, which was was amazing to work really closely with somebody who has been in the industry for 12 years. Uh, and I was able to learn a lot, a lot there uh, and take ownership of a lot at scale. Like I'd taken ownership of a lot of my own projects, but when there's deliverables on the line and a team and users and what have you, that, that does bring a new aspect to it. So that was brilliant. Unfortunately, that project then wrapped up. So uh, for business reasons, they got acquired. Uh, so then I've recently started at an edutech uh, startup uh, and we are a, a part of a team of 12 developers now i think which is which is nice to to be kind of back in a larger team and i'm taking the lead on some infrastructure as code work speeding up uh, our developers um rate of delivery without just forcing us to work faster kind of um focusing on that developer mm-hmm. experience making things faster infrastructure as code devops all that kind of good stuff that can really add multipliers for years and that's really satisfying work because i know that i am going to save myself and the team and hundreds mm. of hours of time for years to come, which is great because then we can deliver faster to our users and for the business. So that's been kind of my journey through those uh, three companies in crikey, three years, uh, not even. But during that time, I, I set up an Instagram account called All the Code and was just you mm-hmm. know just uh, gramming. I guess that maybe that's the verb, uh, gramming about about code uh, and uh, getting into code. And I was talking to lots of career switchers and junior developers who were struggling to kind of get their first jobs. And I could see a lot of the struggles they were going through in the struggles I went through when my business wrapped up and and I was trying to work out if I could do this as a job. And that's Mm. what kind of brought me to writing the the book, uh, Career Switch to Coding, which was in between uh, my last two jobs. I I had a month month spare, so decided to kind of write my experience and and write up a lot of what people have been asking me over the years to basically reduce the number of people that have that dreadful experience of, like I said earlier, applying for 200 jobs and just not really hearing back because it's... It's pretty miserable. Yeah. And regardless of what industry you're applying to, uh, getting a job is a skill in its own right. And it's one that's not really mm-hmm. taught, even on boot camps uh, in the main. Some of them do. Mm. But generally, it's, it's a skill into its own right. And as frustrating as that is, it, it is a yeah. process that you can learn and, and you can rinse and repeat. It's a skill to be used right up until you never want to have to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then, of course... And then, of course, you have to do it again at some point. Um, so really, really interesting uh, journey that gets you there. Tell us a bit more about Career Switch to Coding. If we uh, join your Instagram or follow what it is that you're building and working on, um, where are you at with you know with that project at the moment and what can we look forward to in the future? Yeah, so um, the it's kind of two halves really, I suppose. There's all the code, which is my... Hmm 
personal brand around coding it still focuses mainly on the professional aspect the employability aspect a little bit around kind of coding itself but i've kind of moved more to mindset uh and a bit of sort of just i guess journaling in a way sort of saying this is what i'm working on this is what i've been Mm -hmm. working on this is what the challenges are that kind of thing um and then so that's the kind of all the code instagram side of things uh i think it's like six and a half thousand followers now something like that i've got some fun reels up uh you know, all the kind of typical Instagram uh, stuff, which is which is good fun. Yeah. And then the career switch to coding side is the is the book primarily, um, which as of a couple of days ago is available on Amazon dot all of them basically which is which is really nice then i've also got a podcast uh, around there as well uh, on there as well uh, and also a blog uh, i did 30 days of, of blogging recently which was to uh, challenge myself to mm-hmm. put out as much quality content uh, as quickly as possible for people to kind of really give a reason for people to go to that site so even if they can't buy the book they don't want to buy the mm-hmm. book there's still over 30 blog posts on there uh, all around uh, like i say getting into coding mindset uh, job searching all that kind of stuff uh, as well so there's a really good resource for people to go to uh like i say you know mm-hmm. for free as well you know, they don't have to buy the book uh, but of course the book is is rather excellent yeah uh we'll, we'll definitely come back to that I, I, and i've been following you on, on instagram also on twitter for a little while and i have to do uh, you know if it, if it means anything in terms of credibility i really really do enjoy watching your content and seeing how things come up no, and thank within you. that quick description of of what you're talking about two things really resonated with me one is journaling um, and the concept of journaling. The other is that challenge that you that you mentioned of doing a blog for 30 days straight. When I hear both of those things, I hear a lot of dis- uh, a lot of self discipline, uh, a lot of you know intrinsic motivation. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but talk to me about journaling and this challenge of of writing the way that you did. I mean, what was that experience like? Yeah, so I, I think one of the hardest things that anybody ever has when setting out to create content is you get to a point or maybe even from the beginning where you're like, well, I can't create content every day. Like that's impossible. It's really hard. It is really hard. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. And actually you get to the point where you do have more content ideas than you have time to deliver on them. So when I set out on the idea of let's do 30 posts in 30 days to supercharge the website, I had, I, Mm -hmm. I blatted out 30 ideas and then as I was going, I was mm-hmm. writing every day. I think I only pre-wrote two posts because I had some family events and, and what have you cropping up. Uh, and by the end, I got, I looked back at that list and I still had 17 of my original 30 ideas. So I came up with wow. 17 new ideas during the, the time that I was doing the blogging uh, every single day. One of those posts, I actually uh, landed up being paid to write a post for another website, uh, a remote developer website called arc.dev. They're, they're super good guys as well. They paid me for a post, which was completely unexpected. Uh, they'd seen one of my earlier ones cool. and said, hey, could could we have one of these? Uh, and you, you you do it on our site. I was like, yeah, yeah, fine. That, that's great. Um, and then the journaling side, it's a funny one. So I'm, I say a journaling, it's kind of a mix hmm. of journaling and documenting because sure. what you do as a software developer every day is always different. And it, it fundamentally looks the same. You're sat at a computer and, and sort of twiddling on the keys, but it, it does change every day. And so you have something new pretty much to say every day. I mean, I've been working on the same infrastructure as code project now for seven days, but all of those seven days of coding have had different challenges, uh, different things I've had to overcome. Mm. And so there is something in that that you can share. And, And I think that's the same for any developer at any stage in their career, even if it is your day one of being a developer where you are just firing up hello world in HTML or, or whatever course you've chosen. That's your first day as a developer. Mm-hmm. You have something to say about development from that day. Now, yes, we've all been there. And yes, nearly every developer will probably have written the code that you wrote on the first day. But not every developer will have written the code that you wrote on the second day or the third day or the fourth day. And there's something unique and interesting mm. in all of those days that people behind you can learn from. Because remember, today might be your 100th mm. day, but it's also somebody else's first day. So you're 100 days ahead of them. So there's, mm. there's something that you can teach them. But also... With every self-taught developer, there are areas that you haven't had the opportunity to come across yet. And so, yeah, you might only be six months into your coding career, but you've probably got a whole stack of experience in areas that I don't. 
and I could definitely learn from that. So, you know, that documenting journey, that journaling, what you're doing is a yeah. way that you can create content and share and, and teach other people um, from what you're doing. So that's why I kind of chose to take that kind of documenting um, uh, approach as well, because it's just a bit easier to come up with content. <laughs> well, it's really powerful. I mean, I think there's a benefit from, as you mentioned, just the reflecting, the recognition of where you at. Uh, where you're at today and where you were yesterday uh there's you know just tremendous benefit in that as well as you know uh helping you achieve your your goals i think it was uh a quote often attributed to hemingway when he was asked uh how do you find inspiration where do you wait and he says oh, I, I wait for inspiration but it's always at the at the desk at 9 a.m in the morning um <laughs> and i always think that's an interesting way to look at creativity and and you know that that self-discipline um and, and i think that you've you've naturally found a really good uh, way to achieve both as you've been doing so much content creation. So I'm, I'm yeah, terribly impressed oh, uh, you. by what you've been doing and, and, and the methods that, that get you there. Now, this will bring me to our ultimate question uh, and really the big, the big question in our refactored series. If you were to go back to the very beginning of your coding career, you mentioned that was roughly 13 years ago, and you could give yourself some advice. If you could change something, if you could refactor that journey, what would you say to yourself? It's really, really hard question because depending on where I've been in the last 13 years, I would have probably given you a different answer at every stage, depending on whether I was mm. in an up or a down. So because I self-learned, I'm totally fine with that. I, I don't have any regret that I didn't do a computer science uh, or computer engineering degree. Doing electrical engineering actually kind of set me off really well. But I also see other people who did mm. biology or, or business or whatever. And, and you can tell that they bring something unique with their background. Uh, so so I wouldn't change mm. that. Um, it depends on what I want to optimize for. So over the last 13 years, I've spent eight of those building a manufacturing business. I spent two of those, three of those doing a PhD, two and a half years I was doing a PhD for. Um, and then obviously the last bit, I've been a professional software developer. If I wanted to optimize for money, I wouldn't have bothered doing the business. I'd have just gone and got a job straight away as a software developer. I would have earned far more mm -hmm. to this point in my career and be earning probably significantly more, maybe not significantly more, but a good, depending on where I was in the country or in the world, I'd be earning more than I am now. So if I wanted to maximize for that, I've, don't bother with the business for eight years, just go straight into. However, that business gave me a much more rounded view of what it is to build products. Mm. And that is fundamentally my love. I love building things, products, and I don't really care what tool I use to make it. So I'm equally as happy doing a DIY project with a spanner and a hammer in my hand as I am writing something in code or making a really complicated Excel spreadsheet to manage my family finances. To me, it's the building. And I got eight years of making business decisions around a physical product, around a manufacturing process and a supply chain of finance and raising venture capital, all those kinds of things. So if I wanted to maximize for life experience, then I probably got it right. Uh, if I wanted to maximize yeah. for freedom, I would probably have gone freelance straight away and have spent sure. half of my time building products on the side to gain an income to then have freedom. So it's a bit of a, a, a woolly answer because at any given point in the last 13 years, I would have wholeheartedly have believed every one of those versions of, of that answer uh -huh. because I think how we view our past is intrinsically related to how we feel in our present and where we see our mm -hmm. life going. So where I am right now, I'm, I'm very happy in my current role and I, I want to really settle in here and I want to deliver value for this team and this business for a, a long period of time, whilst also building some stuff on the side for personal development and in yeah. the future. However, middle of running the business, there was absolutely no way I was ever going to work for anybody in my life ever because yeah. that's what I'm doing. Uh, but then the business, mm -hmm. you know, the, the business had to end um, due to some external factors, primarily weather in the UK. Um, and trust me, when you mm. are 150 applications into a 200 application job search and you're not hearing back from anybody, you really wish you'd just gone yeah. into a job from day one. So I, I think yeah. 
if if someone's listening and they're like, Simon, you've been asked a pretty straightforward question and you've given a really woolly answer. Oh, firstly, I'm sorry. Uh, that is that is life. However, I would say think about where you see yourself in five years time, because if you're unhappy with where you are and you're not doing anything to change that, you already are mm. where you will be in five years time, pretty much. Right. If, you, if mm. bar some massive external factor, if you're not actively making steps to change your current situation, you know what you're doing in five years time. It's what you're doing right now. So think about what is it I want in five years' time? Mm. Is it I want a nice, stable job with a decent salary? In that case, just start grinding yeah. out projects, start applying to jobs. The bigger the company, the better, mm. probably. Um, but if you want digital nomad lifestyle, then maybe think about, actually, yeah. well, I want to focus on freelance instead. So and remember that can change people are also allowed to change their minds you know, in two years time if you're into something and you're like oh actually this isn't probably what i had in mind don't double down on that decision like you are allowed to change your mind you can change your mind at that point yeah. i there was a period in my life where i massively regretted starting a business and it was the oh. middle of that summer when i was applying for jobs because it was so hard to get someone to come back to mm. me because my work experience just looked so weird and at yeah. that point in my life, yeah. I was like, why did I start this business? This why, why did I spend eight years doing this? This was a total nightmare. But now, three jobs later, mm. um, I'm like, well, actually, that was a really great thing for me to do. And yeah, fine, I don't have as many pounds or dollars um, in the bank account, but I'm pretty happy with where my life went. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, well, in five years' time, I'd be happy where I am now, but also with something sure. more substantial on the side. So um yeah, sorry, that's a really roundabout answer. So I hear no, you've given I mean, we went we went a roundabout on that one, but I really appreciated it because there were a few exits to the roundabout that, that we went down and then and then came back. And one of them was, you know, do we value purely is it money, right? If that's success and that's what it is, cool, then that's great. Is it freedom? You mentioned freedom. Uh, you know, what decisions can we make that will increase the chances of feeling, you know, a freedom within our career? in the future. The other message that I, I take away from that is learning. Do I want to put myself into a place where I'm more likely to learn more, maybe in a faster moving environment, maybe with, um, you know, more time available to do more of a self-taught learning journey. Uh, and, and more than anything, what I really got out of that was you mentioned the value of your previous experience as well. And I think this is something that we, we hear about often. I'm sure you, you know what I'm talking about here. When people say, well, that previous experience is irrelevant. Um, I don't think that's ever really the case. Your previous experience, as you mentioned, your past is what brought you to where you are now. Embracing that previous experience is no matter how, you know, in inverted commas, irrelevant it may seem to, to others, um, it will give you uh, an edge in what it is that you're building and creating, especially if you decide to go on a 30 day crusade of building and writing and creating <laughs> epic content, yeah. it will come out. It will come out in one way. Yeah, I'm absolutely yeah. sure of it. Um, but Simon, that was a really great answer. And, and you've certainly given uh, myself and, and those listening to this uh, a few things to think about. Uh, while I've got you, I do want to just mention uh, at all the code on Instagram. Uh, also on Twitter, is it the same handle? Uh, it is, but it's got an underscore at the end, which is very awkward. I apologize. The underscore should be at the start, cool. really, but too late. <laughs> That's all right. It's it's trendy. Where we also have the underscore at the end of the Twitter oh, okay. handle. I think oh, it's a trend. We we'll, we'll just we'll just you know <laughs> let's let's stick with that story. Uh, and finally, and congratulations, truly, um, for for self publishing. Career Switch to Coding. It was published, uh, I'm looking at it here on Amazon now, on just the 13th of September. We're sitting here today on the 20th. So congratulations on a much wider release of your new book. If you had to pick one thing to tell everyone about the book, um, what would that be? Uh, it's no fluff, all action. I don't miss my words. I tell you what to do. I love that. It's definitely my kind of book. Uh, and I think that's a really nice way to finish our chat today. Simon, thank you so much for the time. I can't wait to catch up again next time. And I will be ordering my copy of Career Switch to Coding right away. <laughs> awesome. Cheers, Ben. Thank you.